Oh, that's good. Can you hear it? Did you play it? We are Journals Out Loud. That was my cue. <laughs> I'm your lovely and captivating host, Louise Palenker, here with a panel of wise and wonderful young people. We're here to solve all of your life problems slash issues, dilemmas, <laughs> and such. <laughs> We've got a great show planned for tonight. Please subscribe to us. Please hit thumbs up, because so far you like us, right? Woo! It's not a lie to hit the thumbs up. This is pretty good. Pretty entertaining <laughs> stuff right here. You found it. We've got Ryan. We've got Shira, Tara, Katie Michael, Jabbar. Yay! Oh, my God. My Jabbar, my heart is back. <laughs> <laughs> and Jilly. <laughs> so the first thing that we were going to address is like I try to go into the news and say, like, hey, what's happening in the news? And then I, I, I so I opened the news. You can find the news online, it turns out. What? It's there. Yes. And so there's a guy named Jake Paul, very, very YouTube famous. Very, very YouTube famous. Mm -hmm. Turns out, not the best neighbor. Mm -hmm. Not the best. So, uh, apparently, he's so famous, and I guess he has a really famous brother, and Tara, I think, is versed in all things Paul. And apparently, <laughs> they signed him to the Disney Channel. Yeah, well, let's, like, take that back for a quick second. Not, well, like, you're not fully an expert. Like, Paul, I, Paul family. You don't want that title? Like, I'm not, I'm not a Jake <laughs> Paul title. No, no, but I'm you're a Paul family historian, so... At least that's how we booked you on the show. The title that we're putting underneath your name. Tara Bianca, Bianco, Jake Paul, historian. All right. What happened? Hold it didn't work? We're not a oh. oh, my. I got to start us over. Yeah. I'm sorry. So I don't know Are we live? We Are we live on YouTube? Let's start. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, YouTube, just uh, bear with okay. us. For a few hey, man. We're just... Our best yes, we are. <laughs> I'm queen of that. Jilly. Yeah, take two, though. That's how you learn. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. What's up? I'm Hush You. <laughs> Just the show to start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are Come Journals Out Loud. Oh. <laughs> I hear that drum and I just... Yeah, <laughs> you're on it. No, we, you're on it. We need a live, stu we need a live studio band. Don't <laughs> don't look at me. <laughs> Why are you looking at me? Wait, so what exactly is going on right now? <laughs> problems. Uh, basically, hey, Thomas and Drew are learning the boards. We can so. solve your life problems, but yeah. we can't solve our tech problems. They can. We can. We can't. But they can. But like, is anything that we're saying right now going to be seen? It was seen. Everything you. Can it's like the can dance. It you. was fleeting, and it In will not be. You have the right you will to see it. You will, you will have seen it. You will have heard it, but it won't be saved because I will chop off the beginning of this. Ready. Gotcha. Three, two, one. We are Journals Out Loud. I'm your lovely and captivating host, Louise Palenker, here with a panel of wise and wonderful <laughs> young people. We're here to talk about all the things in life that actually, truly matter. I've been out there wandering. Boom. I've been in We've got Ryan, Shira, Tara, Katie Michael, Jabbar, Jilly, and Woo, we just have <laughs> such a sweet show. It's just packed with goodness. Woo! So please Yay. hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. All because so it. far, you like it, correct? It's not a lie to hit that like button. That way there's not <laughs> something you have to come back and it do should later. should always start off liked. And unless you don't like it, then you Yeah, always like start with like <laughs> and then, you know, adjust right. as Just to your you preferences. Your life. You go. You so the life. first thing we're going to talk about is what's going on in the news. And what's go oh Jake Paul right? Did you yeah. say it? Yeah, Jake Paul is in the news because he's of like a Tara's huge a YouTuber. <laughs> but yeah, I heard it we turns have out. Expert? Yeah, Tara's he, a historian of the Pauls. Well, let me tell you something about the Pauls. Not the best neighbors. <gasps> yeah. So Gasp. because they're doing all crazy stuff on YouTube all day, all night. So if you live right next door, maybe you don't want to hear like a chainsaw and a fireball at two a.m. Maybe Wait, not. Maybe fireball. Not. <laughs> what? It's just a thought. So no, do you know what they did for one of their videos? No, the please tell me. Educate, yeah. educate. I'm here okay. to learn. So I'm just going to take Teach like us. maybe just like a quick educate minute us. to explain please. who Jake Paul is exactly. Please. So to, to the best of my knowledge yeah, from kind of keeping up. Can I just say why up. I love this though? Because like there are times when like we we have to educate each other, you know, yeah. like Weezy will tell us about like stuff that's happening in politics. Like, you know, I had to educate us and some inspirational things last week. But like and this is Tara's. And yes, and mm -hmm. This is Tara. Th this is something that you know this really 
I'm so excited. So educate Kara, me, it's, take it home, yeah. go. Okay. Well, since I do YouTube, I kind of like, I follow the people that do get like a lot of views. And if you just have any type of like Gmail or anything and you're like on YouTube, it's always going to be Jake Paul and Logan Paul. There's something coming up on the two of them. They were the ones that were from Vine that were the oh funny God. brothers. Yeah. Like Logan, he would like just do like splits everywhere. So he's called the Logan gang and Jake Paulers are or Jake Paul is Jake Paulers like for his fans. And so I'm are definitely you a part of that. I'm not a Jake Pauler. Absolutely not? not. Because I'll tell you why. So <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> his YouTube videos are funny. Like I will say that his like his vlogs are really good. Like real recognized quality, real. Yes. No. It, yeah. Both of them. Their vlogs. They're very entertaining. They have like they're great on camera. You just want to keep watching like it's great. Like I don't have an issue with it. And then there was the whole like battling and being like singers and whatnot. That's where I'm kind of starting to go like but you're not you're not singers. It's because Standard you're so lane. popular. You're doing that. But that's like not fair to the people who actually like are trained. Just in my personal opinion, I think they're selling and they're doing fine and they're talented. But do I think that they should be doing music? Maybe not. Give it to somebody else. So after all that scandal, then... The scandal on him getting arrested. Jake Paul getting arrested. We don't know if it's true or not. I still don't know for sure. He probably it's did. In public record. My sources well, tell me. No, because it was it was all over YouTube saying Jake Paul got arrested. But like, did he? Did he not? There's just a just picture going around. Well, well no, I, no, 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 no. Not to get views because there was an article or like a little video that from like KTLA was on the news and everything about who he was as a person. Let me tell you, this kid, when he was on camera with the interview people from KTLA and like actually being like who he as is Jake Paul he literally is the character from his vlogs and it's terrible the way he was so immature to the people <laughs> like I was just like you're really talking like that in front of everyone to the whole media it's like oh yeah let me do this <laughs> to interview like to people interviewing him like so he he's like, like perpetually jacked up yeah and he lets okay. his he he gives out his address so girls come crowding around oh, wow. his house wow. he he literally he searched up on Teen fire. Ten's house. It's Te on Google. Yeah. You can go up to their house. Oh yeah, I don't want God. to. All right, so because we have a video. Let's go. Are you guys ready to play the video? So here's what happened, and I guess uh, he was signed by Disney, and then Disney got a load of his personal personality, and then they were like, yeah, no. So roll the videotape. Yeah. Channel star Jake Paul, who's been making life <laughs> no. miserable for neighbors by filming dangerous stunts <laughs> on his property. Oh, yeah, this is, is one of the videos I saw, yeah. Again. The fire department pulled up to his upscale West Hollywood home after getting a call for help. Firefighters armed with oh chainsaws God. appear ready to cut open his roof, but there's no sign of fire or smoke. Then firefighters were told everything was okay. Do you have any idea what happened? Um, it's, it's a prank. <laughs> <gasps> the fire department tells Inside Edition, we were unable to find any evidence of a fire. It's entirely possible that this was a prank call. Probably. All the chaos surrounding the 20-year-old has now led to major fallout. The Disney what? Channel just announced they were dropping Paul from their show, Bizarre Bark. I am no longer going to be a part of Bizarre Vark. He says leaving Confirmed the show the will block. just give him more time to make crazy videos for his YouTube channel. Paul was apparently not home. He was in Miami when the fire department was called. Neither Disney nor Paul referred to the dispute with the neighbors in their statements about him leaving the show. She's like the it's perfect so person to come on so after not, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I love like, her. She's the like the juxtaposition of like, yeah, like, <laughs> like hi, pretty blonde. Can you believe it? I, so, all right, I don't get it. Like, what there are you get? rules like in the world that we oh. have them. They're called laws, right? Like, you can't just have like oh, that house is not serious. permitted to have a giant fire in the back. Like, that's illegal. And he like uploads videos of this. How is that no, like how I don't yeah, like I it. You I can't just start just giant fires like on private even if you own the property like there are laws. I think the laws, bigger you know? issue is is that he no is a role model. Oh when no! That's oh, not a role model, argument. but I know. Oh, I hate oh that chill argument. out! Right? No, 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 that's uh, what I on Disney. Uh, if you're agree. gonna be on Disney, and Disney should have like understood, I think who he is more. Like you have to be a little bit more careful about who he's a. He's like he's okay. a child that just does yeah, like, whatever he wants. He's a twenty year old because guy. It's funny, but if you want to like do him. if you want to do those kinds of crazy stunts, can't you do it like Jackass, where you're in a studio and there's stuntmen and there's and, like, all the fire department is standing by and it's more 
controlled. But I don't no, think it's a because Disney, I don't think it's a Disney person. I think it's, it's like a because YouTube. people love seeing how crazy someone's going to go, and then they want to take after it. So they love tuning in, not because it's oh Jackass and it, it's it's in a studio. They're like oh crap, these guys are really actually doing this stuff for real, and that's what entices people. Which those people should not be entertained by it, but it's entertaining I to get some. It. And so I, I would if no, I live next door, I'd have my own show called Angry Neighbor, and it'd just be me <laughs> calling the cops. Funny. The whole I mean, show. it's entertaining. <laughs> like I was entertained. I think that. What were you going to ask her? No, I see. I see your face. Yeah, I don't understand why people find like that kind of. Oh stuff wait, well you you read my face wrong. Because <laughs> I totally what? I get it. That's entertaining. I don't like him because he's like kind of rude. Well, he's really rude. So like whatever. The what? part I just don't understand is like no, the he... cops show up and they're like, or the fire the fire department's like, we have, we saw no evidence of a fire. It's like he literally uploaded a video of himself starting a fire. Like I don't. How is that not evidence? Enough? It was a different day. Yeah. But then I also okay, think so that if you, can, if you confess, are to a you not allowed to like? Day? No, any I fan or anyone yeah. who knows where he lives could have called the fire department Why? as a prank. Because there's like laws about that. I don't are know you exactly. sure? I'm a hundred. There's so many things you just can't do just because you own the property. If you buy a piece of property, you might not even be able to cut down a certain tree. Like that's it's yeah. Just you like, are endangering your neighbor if you do certain things because houses are. We all share the same space on and Earth. Residential, pro- ra- residential areas. Because he's a public figure and he has millions upon. Dude, if they release one video, it already gets over probably I want to say like five to ten million views that one day. And if they have no product placement where they have to like pay for it or like any music where they have to pay for it, they make millions of dollars off of that one video. That doesn't mean it's safe. No, but what I'm <laughs> saying is they can get out of anything that they get into. They're millionaires. They might be even billionaires like in a year. Like I think they, they make they, a crap load of money so they're not going to get in trouble because that's what F's up our system and stuff. And yeah. So one of my <laughs> uh, one of my favorite uh, people is Post Malone because he might be like really the he might be the ugliest man alive to you <laughs> like <laughs> what Brian <laughs> he's, uh, he's not so really, I, feel I like didn't he think tries. Post Malone was gonna be your I think he tries person. to look <laughs> like not he, look, he looks coming? like a dying man true can you find a picture of the, who I they're talking bad. about um, I feel but, uh, bad but I also but love frick. him because he's because I enjoy his music I do too um he's a good rapper uh I and I enjoy his music but so you know there's this there's um this YouTuber. Well, there's a YouTube account, H3, H3 Productions, and then it's, it's Ethan and Ela Klein. They're the goats. Uh, but they're really good friends <laughs> with Austin. Austin is Post Malone's real name. Austin actually was born in Syracuse, believe it or not. Okay, there uh, he is. He's cute. <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> that's, that's a good photo. That's, that's a good cute. photo. He's cute. Oh, you gotta go like now with the bangs and yeah, stuff. Uh, that's a good photo. Wait, yeah, I gotta look up the new one. Let me see. Uh, but long story short, like so, put in his yeah, name why, in twenty seven. I guess <laughs> so. So I guess um, <clears throat> so. Ethan Klein always makes fun of Logan Paul. This is what little I do know about it. Is he always makes fun of him on YouTube? Yes. Um, and like. So then, and Post Malone's like one of his really good friends. So Post Malone like also makes fun of him and then ordered a bunch of his like merchandise. And so they were like very confused. Like, why would he order our merchandise? He like posted it to Twitter that he ordered it. So they like delivered it, hand delivered it, which like was one, co- was like one <laughs> controversial thing because they like got his address when that wasn't like, you can't just do that from someone who orders from your company. You can't just like mm-hmm. get their address and show up at their but door. But they're friends. So. No, 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 no. Logan no, showed up not. at Post Malone's house because Post Malone ordered his merchandise. But, but Post, Malone but Post Malone's like friends it. with Ethan, not Logan. And then mm-hmm. anyway, Logan was like, hey, like was like vlogging him like while he was like getting his pants on, like getting ready to go. And like he was like, oh, is it cool if like if like I do a vlog? And he was like, oh, yeah, but like didn't know he was recording him like the kid just doesn't know boundaries uh and, and anyway post malone bought all the gear so he could make fun of him in an upcoming video and like he, he didn't know that that went over his head uh which i find kind of funny that he that's like cool totally that's like did you see doing. john oliver this week he bought all the all alex jones merchandise exactly. it's so alex funny jones is one of my favorite people on earth <laughs> also like let me say that i love him because he's not fake like okay he's 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 crazy. a horrible horrible he's man he's ryan a, he's a horrible man i love him he's though. the devil incarnate okay but here's the thing what? like wheezy the thing about alex jones yeah. is a lot of people put on shows alex jones if you go back and like watch when he was 18 on public access television he really believes what he's saying like he was saying it back then and at least he doesn't consistent. really believe what he's saying uh, he was saying when he was 18 on public access i don't television, believe he believes and what there he's was saying. no industry for him to, to I, he's I, I making I love up him, conspiracy I hate theories him, but i love him you know like also he, he look, uh, he's just great he makes noises he looks like a frog he talks about goblins like, <laughs> he's wait, horrible he's i love horrible. alex jones i'm gonna buy some alex jones i beer. just want to say one last thing yes about please this. Disney, this is what you get for trying to choose a YouTuber over me for this role. Oh, thank you. <laughs> listen. Thank you. Listen. Real actor. Me, Jake Paul, I think, and two other guys were up for this role. 
And of course, they're going to go with the person who has the most followers. It brings the most views. Were you Smart. up for you Elon? You're kidding. One. Jabbar, yes. please yes. talk. This yes. is Say more things. So, Disney's, Disney's holler at me if you guys still need Disney. somebody, but that's what you guys get. No, Hi, Jabbar. Jabbar, what happened? So you went to audition for this role, and what, what did they have you do? Um, it was basically the same thing. It's literally Jake Paul. I can see he owns that role because it's him on a day-to-day basis, but... They made me do very Disney stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, did, make you you do that? did you do the like one a, thing? No, I didn't have to do that. Oh. But they had, like, made me walk around the room with, like a chicken and like very weird. That but it was so fun. So funny. But, yeah. Well, it's well, okay. You, don't, you well, shouldn't be on Disney again? anyway. Bizarre Vark. All right. Hopefully Disney's busy it's right bizarre. now. They're not watching because they're busy bizarre. developing a show for Jabbar Lewis. No, better than Disney. That, better Jabbar. than Disney. Yeah. All right, I so now we it's time video. for share. It's time for sharing, <laughs> and we have some. Uh, it's time to share with Katie Michael, and Katie Michael has something to share. Yay! Yay. Round of applause. Yay. I do. I have something to share, and it's about We're time. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it. Actually, well, that's so funny. Um, so two <laughs> <laughs> two years ago, I confirmed with myself that I'm actually bisexual, um, and I that's something that I had been struggling with, dealing with whatever since about eighth grade i had these feelings and all through high school um these feelings of like oh my god am i a lesbian do i like girls i don't know what's going on and it's i didn't really understand my feelings because i couldn't differentiate between the love i had for my parents and the love i had for like friends and then a person and then finally i got a boyfriend my one and only relationship i've ever had in my entire life and i realized what like love is and so then two years ago I met this girl and I knew that I had a crush on her because like those feelings were the same. And I look back in high school, I was like, oh my God, like I had crushes on girls. That's so crazy. And so then I told myself, I was like, Katie Michael, you got to figure it out right now. Do you like girls or do you not? Like what's going on? And so I kissed her and literally in that moment, I realized that dating a girl could totally be like a thing in my life. And I was like so happy because I finally figured it out, like all the pieces had come together. And so then fast forward to now, and I hadn't, I haven't told anybody until, um, like a couple of weeks ago, like I told my friends, my family, and now I'm telling you guys, but, um, I didn't have like really a reason to tell anybody. And it wasn't because I was afraid of anybody, like telling anybody, like the usual reasons people are afraid of telling people that they're gay or whatever is because they don't want to be bullied or they're afraid of being judged. Like I didn't care if anybody judged me or bullied me, but I was afraid of being doubted Mm -hmm. because I mean, my like reasoning of doubting my own self was because I thought I was just being dramatic. I thought I was just trying to get attention, whatever. And obviously that wasn't the case. But if I was feeling that, like I knew other people might doubt that just because of who I am. I am very dramatic and I do love attention, but I didn't want that to be like a thing in anybody's mind. When I told people I wanted it to be a fact. And so at Pride, my reason for telling people came and tapped me on the shoulder and I gave her my Instagram and we have been like talking ever since and you know chatting it up and I actually just went to go see her in Las Vegas to kind of see what this like connection is and might be and uh, yeah so I'm like talking to a girl and my parents know and my friends know and now you guys know and it's yeah. like out in the world now that I am bisexual. That's the Amazing. best story ever. Yeah. <laughs> so you met your girlfriend? Or are, is, can I well, say girlfriend? No, we're not. We're not girlfriend. <laughs> Back it yet. up, Weezy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Our, both of our. The reason that I went to Las Vegas is to kind of see like where we're both at in life and actually see if we have a connection. And we do, but we both kind of agreed our lives are not in the place for a relationship right now. But we do like each other a lot. She's actually coming to see me at the end of August. And um, so, yeah, no, we're not girlfriend, girlfriend yet, but, you know, you never know. But it's a good connection to kind of, like, make. So I have, a, I have a question. Yes. So if if you're growing up and you're – if if you have the potential to fall in love with someone of the same sex, do you think that you kind of, like, are always questioning or doubting that because most of what you're seeing in society or what's portrayed in the media or what your friends and neighbors are doing is heterosexual? And so – Instead of it just being a crush and going with it, if it were an opposite sex, you just kind of go, wait, and then you you play all kinds of games in your mind? No, that's exactly what it is. And I like I was never around anybody that had a problem with any of the community yeah. from the LGBT. You know, like nothing like that. I would never had a problem with it growing up. But since our world isn't, that's not like the norm, it definitely was kind of, I wouldn't have mind, but I also just didn't know 
how to understand it until like I went for it. But I it was like, am I like that's okay? And then I was like, no, I don't think I am. And then I was mm-hmm. like, I'd see a girl. I'm like, oh, maybe am I a guy? Kind of thinks she's cute. And then I was like, oh no, maybe I'm just like appreciating. But then I also went back to like I really did think that for a while I convinced myself I was just being super dramatic and like I wanted attention, but I didn't want to be that girl. So I didn't want like I didn't literally didn't tell anybody until a couple of weeks ago. But are there people who do that who say that they're attracted to everyone just because they want loads of attention? Yes. If you go to any type of college party, there's at least one girl that's gonna be like, oh yeah, I like girls, so that all the guys are gonna like be. I've seen it. I've literally seen it happen. Mm -hmm. And I just like I don't want to be that I think it's it's a really big life discovery that I had and that people can have about being gay or wanting to be trans or whatever. And I just thought like it wasn't something that I wanted to play around with. I really didn't want, you know, it's your life. Exactly. It took me a while to like really discover it. But um, I just didn't. Yeah. Well, we're very honored that you came here to tell us and share this uh, important piece of information and um, just kind of like awareness of, yeah. of the world and how people uh, think and feel and love and beyond. So do we have any questions from anybody here? No. no. Uh. God damn it, Katie Michael. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. We're no, going to get good. married in the future. <laughs> okay. okay. Unless you have a girlfriend that we don't know about. Yeah, yeah you want to <laughs> tell us something too? Oh yeah, it's, ah, it's, it's time to share with Jabbar. <laughs> Yeah, you want to go now? (laughs) All right. Uh, Jilly, would you read the first question? It's kind of a long one. I I think I tried to cut this down and then I gave up. Oh, because this is just so, this question is so um, direct Mm -hmm. that I was like, let's leave more of this in because it's almost shocking and um, I want to hear what you guys think. Anyway, go ahead. So I was dating this guy. This one, or is yeah, I the like one that. Neighbor. Oh yeah, read the second one. Because I love the, the I love the first one. But you, well, I just love it because like I love the last. Well, four then words tease of it. the second one, and Mariah, read the first one, and then Jilly, you're gonna read the second okay. one. Okay. All right. The first one is just I like my neighbor, and we've been talking, and I want him to get at me. I don't know what to do to get him to like me. Uh, I'll do anything. All right. Before I throw to you guys, part. I have a question: Is "get at me" a new thing that people are saying? That's an old thing. Get at that. Yeah, get okay, at yeah, that. Because it's just no so idea. it's so predatory. That, that was high school for me. It's it very is. predatory. But yeah, like that's you'd be like, like, let me get at that, girl. All right, go <laughs> go ahead. Adre- address the question, Ryan. Hey, BB. What oh, I didn't really like. I I no. You don't. If, if okay, you don't, don't like, do anything. Like yeah. ha- uh Okay, this is so lame. But like, start. <laughs> Like hanging out in your front yard or something, so he'll see. Take no, up yard no. work. The thing is, the <laughs> yeah. thing is, it doesn't work like that. Like you don't convince people to like you. That's not how life no, works. No, I know, but you so, gotta. So like, yeah, like obviously, scene. like talk to the guy a little bit or the girl. I don't know which, but ta- uh, him. It's a guy. Talk to him. Uh, get to know him. But like, d- I'll do anything. Thing is really unhealthy. You want to do? Right. You want to do something awesome? Watch for the FedEx person to come. Oh my God. Take his package to your house and Ooh. then be like, knock, That's knock. A federal oh crime. my no. gosh. I'm knock, so knock. sorry. Oh my gosh, no. I'm you're, you're like a package was delivered to my house. It's so weird. Hi, my name is no. Katie. Michael. Nice to so oh my, my, my you guys want to do that? The way the question is knock, phrased, knock, it's, it just sounds like she's <laughs> saying, like, I want to be passive and have him jump on top of me. That's the way it's phrased. And wow. you you can Wait, be I, mean, I think no, she's being over dramatic. No. I think as a, an adult they might say that, but I don't think as like But you can be a pro- a part of the solution. You can engage with him. You don't have to just stand still and wait for him to notice you somehow like or for us to tell you what sign to hold in the air so that he'll approach you. Like you can approach him and say, "Hey neighbor." I mean, you totally can, but like <laughs> It's fun hey, when neighbor. the guy comes. We have a to phone you. call. Maybe someone can help us with this. Oh. Calling us. Hello, Patrick. hello. It's me. Hello. Hi. Hi. Who's this? Uh, this is Logan from Jersey. Logan. I Logan Paul. I was like, Logan Paul. Yeah, I was like, I was like, uh oh. Oh shoot. I was like, Tara, Jones, that one goes to you. What's up, Logan? How you doing? I'm fam? from Jersey. What's up, yeah, Logan? What's Logan, do you have a question for somebody? It was good. Um, just advice. Just advice in general. All right, we want to hear um, what you have you to say. Do you want to give advice? Yeah. No, just like I'm, I need some advice. You need oh, advice. Okay. All right, we're, oh. here, we're here for you. Um, so I'm in a relationship, right? Uh-huh. Right. And this one girl, well, this girl that I'm actually with right now, I don't know if she's into me. Like, I can tell that she's somewhat into me, but I can't really fully tell. So, like, I'm just confused. So, like, in general, like. Wait, just you just know. said she's your girlfriend? You don't yeah, know she's. she's just, like, 
I'm just, I just can't tell if she's fully into me, like just in general, like fully into a relationship and stuff like that. Mm. So Man. when you make a plan, is she all down for that, or does she somehow, does she sometimes go, well, I'm not sure, let me see, let me check, or is she, does well, she see? Well, that seem... doesn't mean. Yeah, but I just want to know. how like, old are you guys? How old are you guys? I'm 18, she's 17. Does she make okay. time for you? What? Does she make time for you? Somewhat. What Somewhat. makes you think that that she's could potentially be not into it? Because like I'll be like I'll be like with her, and then like all the times like we hang out together, like sometimes we hang out stuff like that. Like, we'll be at the mall, maybe ice skating, and like I just see a look in her eyes that she's not really into it. And I'm just like, oh, no. I'm honestly, like, well, do you want to be here or not? And it's just like, I feel like you kind of really gotta go. Stuff. You kind of gotta go with your gut feeling, and I think the best thing to do is. Um, communicate with her like honestly just have a real nice sit down talk with her because if she's your girlfriend you should be able to have those talks you need to feel comfortable with them and so sit down and just say you know I don't I don't understand like I feel that you're just not feeling it can you please help me understand what's going on maybe something's going on with your life but the best advice I can give is actually sit down and have a heart-to-heart talk to get to know your answers how long have you guys been together uh, three years, and I just can't really tell. Oh, wow, you definitely need years. to have a heart to heart. So dude. you know, at three years, Whoa. it feels like you can you can open the conversation by saying, "Are we good?" Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can open yeah. it like that. You can what you can really Yo, say, and I can't really hear. So excuse if I'm interrupting, but I just oh. I don't have headphones. Uh, but <laughs> I've, I've I've pieced it together from what I've heard. <laughs> After three years, you can definitely sit down and just say, like, "Hey, I feel like something has changed. I don't know what yeah. it is. Maybe I'm reading into it too much." But it's you've known someone good. for a while. You get a good read for how they feel in certain situations, and if something's off. You're probably right. Something might be off. You might yeah. not be right about what it uh, is, but you can definitely sense something yeah. has changed. After Bring it up years, and you just know her. and listen for her answer. You don't have to make it be what you want it to be or what you don't want it to be. Just let her answer your question. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and especially. Right, thank you guys so much. Yeah. If you feel like things have changed, the dynamic between the two of you, especially since you have been together for so long, if you feel like there's a dynamic that has changed, you can definitely say because sometimes. You you could be ready to move on too, and you just haven't even admitted that to yourself. Yes. I was just so, about to say yep. that. Is that that's an age, yeah. 18, 19, yeah. 20 is an age where you guys grow apart. People grow apart from each For other, sure. from friends, from close family members, and that's just how it is. And she'll always be special yeah. because you shared those important three years with each other. But it just maybe bravo, time. my friend. Three years is a long time, a and that's really good, Logan. Time. Thank you so much for calling in. Good Thanks, question. Logan. Keep us posted. Yeah, keep us posted. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so Jilly, now you get to read this. I like to know. Logan is the <laughs> cutest, but you, Jilly, you get to read this entirely dishy question. I know. It's really dishy. What do you want me to say for the expletive word? Do you want me to just say, just say it? Maybe say F. Okay. Just wondering. F- okay. Yeah. F. <laughs> okay. Okay, F. so I was dating this guy for two years, and he asked me, and he asked me to go on a break out of nowhere, and then at the end of the break, a week, we broke up. He told me that he wanted to go to date other people before he settled down. We are both seniors going to college in the same area. Now it's been about a month and he says he misses me and he's confused because he wants to get back together, but he tried to F this other girl and couldn't get hard because he was thinking about us and try, wait, sorry. He, wait, okay, I you have lost to go, my place. Katie Michael's face, please. What? Like, just, I'm oh just, my God, sorry. I'm just saying, you know, um, cut to. Go sorry, ahead. sorry, sorry. I lost my place because I went uh, thinking about us Just and, to get me and hard. him. He feels like he wants to get back together. I know for a fact he would be a hundred percent faithful. He doesn't cheat, but he wants to try and f around with some people and be single for a little longer before he decides for sure. I want to be with him, but I'm worried. If he needs time to be single and free right now, should I just be okay with that? No, it's just it's just a complicated. I feel like you're just seniors. Don't go to college. Do your thing and then... Is he oversharing? Did you just tell them not to go to college? No, I no. said go to college. Oh, I, I, thing, I, I, and then okay. No, I, I think that that is necessary information. Yeah, well, part of it maybe. You don't think he's oversharing when he says, I was with this other girl, oh, you'd be but surprised. I couldn't no. do You'd be well, surprised. Like, know. you need to it's tell your, your ex that? You don't need he to. He might think it might be endearing. Oh, like, I couldn't I couldn't yeah. do it with this other girl, babe, because I was just thinking about <laughs> you. like, uh-uh. Well, okay, so here's the thing. It's just so crass. There's a few main points. Yeah, the first okay, is Ryan. the it first. Is. The first is uh, I, that I know he'd be 100 percent faithful. He doesn't cheat. Like, like you don't know anything. And the reason I say that is because someone who would be 100 percent faithful is someone who's 100 percent invested in a relationship, and that's clearly not him. Now, should you be okay with that? Absolutely. That's his choice. He broke up with you. He's been very clear, seemingly, about what his expectations are. 
Then after a little while, he second-guessed himself. He was doubting it, and he tried to feel out the waters back with you. You also don't owe him anything. So if he wants to break up with you, he doesn't get to control if you guys get back together, and neither do you. You can only choose whether or not you're together right now. And he clearly has chosen that he doesn't want to be together right now. So don't sit around and wait for him to figure out what he wants to do. You go enjoy yourself. And if you want to get back together, not if you plan to, but if you actually want to in that moment, go ahead and do it. But that's you don't get to really control it like that. Live your life, girl. Mm-hmm. Go live it. But so you got to be okay with what he wants because he's been pretty What it sounds like it. to me is that he's saying, I really like you and I would have sex right now with you if you would do that under these circumstances. These are my terms and conditions. I'm going to be off having sex with other people and hopefully you'll wait for me because you're the love of my life. But in the meantime, no. um, I, will, no, no, I might I think about you while I try to have sex with other people no. or I might no. not. Weezy, and you're then, making it too dark. I. That's what it... No, no, I don't it, think no, that's he's what not it, asking. I, I think when a guy is ready to commit to you, he doesn't tell you any of that stuff that's he, that he's I thinking think about. You guys are so young, so you're not in like in the love where it's just like I'm going to be with you forever and ever. You're not in that. She thing. is, and then and, no, and he's not. asking oh, her. I she's think not I think she's like, oh, should she I let it be now. okay? Wow. <laughs> Katie Michael's so upset she hit herself in the nose with the yes. microphone. No, I think he's he like wants to. They were probably together for a while. He wants to probably. Like be with other people. What are, didn't they say that they're he's about to go to, to college? college? Probably wants to be with other people. They don't want to get parties. too attached, and he's probably having a hard time doing that. And I yeah, think I that's think what this is. He's not asking her to be in an open relationship or to give him permission to cheat on her. He's being very clear about what he wants, and he's pretty much saying, "I'm not ready to be in a relationship. I really do like you, and but maybe we'll get say back that together." I think they both, all the sexual I think, details. Well, got to, he, he, he I mean, maybe for you. Hold up, hold up. Maybe for you. Wait, hold up, hold up. He didn't come to the com- he didn't come to the table with this information just like r- ready to be dished out. It was this it, it, they had a conversation very clearly like yeah. and that's the direction it went. You know, she could say, "Well, did you do anything with any other girls while okay, we were okay. apart?" Right. says, "Yeah, well, I tried." What do you mean you tried? Like the conversation I goes see. in that direction, you know. She asked him some some cross-examinationy <laughs> types of hard-hitting I just investigative. I just what, Tara? <laughs> I just don't want her to <laughs> wait around for this guy because he That's says what I'm, yeah. F around with some people and be single for a little longer before he decides for sure. Um, If a guy comes along and is nice to you, don't pass him along because, oh, my ex-boyfriend is like, Gonna not once ready. get his shit together and I'm maybe with him. maybe see exactly like so not even for don't sure. worry about him. Tara Bianco. Can I just say that like Jabbar said, don't. Don't wait around for that type of guy because if a guy really likes you, really wants to be with you, he's going to let you know that. He's going to be upfront about everything. And that's the type of person you want to be with. They're honest. They're letting you know exactly what's going on in their minds. They're not going to lie to you like none of these BS games that everybody likes to play. And so when you find that person, great. Hold on to them. But that person isn't your ex. Wait, right let now. me just I just to play devil's what? advocate here. What has he not been clear about? I think he's been incredibly clear about his expectations. And what no, he wants. but but okay, but those are the expectations that you want. Obviously, okay, so they don't line up. But yeah. it's not it's not on him for doing anything. He no, didn't do anything he wrong. He didn't do anything wrong. I okay, yeah, that. okay, that's fine. And so yeah. I'm on Team Jabbar here. She needs to be open to other opportunities. Yeah. Because if it's it comes not back other, around and he's ready and you're ready yeah. and you want to be together, cool. But don't don't wait. I just think tell that's him, the thing. Tell don't him, wait. Tell him to that you don't really want to talk to him yeah. if, if while he's figuring this stuff out. Because trust me, that's a bad idea. And if he has, and if he wants, you know, if he can be, if he wants to be in your life, he can let you know then. And, cool. and also, can know. I just say for your own, for your own health and safety, if you got <laughs> all of this information out of him by cross-examining him, as Ryan is indicating is possibly the case, don't do that. It's going you don't need to picture all of these details. You it's never not, want the it answers. It shouldn't matter though. I, yeah, like, you but can be it, okay well, with maybe it. she's okay with it. Yeah. Like you're I mean, gonna, you're never your gonna be, you're opinion, never gonna be with sure. someone think, who hasn't done something with someone else. I know, else. but I think like, she's kind of torturing herself right now. She, he's not no, with her, and that's all she needs. She to is know. torturing herself. She's not really asking because she's interested. She's asking because she's hoping the answer will be no. Yeah, and the answer is yes, and yeah. then she's confirming. It, you know. Well, you're making it worse for yourself, girl. That's what we're saying. Mm-hmm. Jabbar, next question, please. Get it, Jabbar. So. Trusting people has always been difficult for me. Recently, a lot of people have been saying, if you ever need anything or just want to talk, you can come to me, okay? And I really want to trust these people. There's so much going on that I want to talk to them about, but I don't know how. I always feel like I'm bothering them, even though I know I'm probably probably not. So how can I feel more comfortable with talking to these people when I need to? I actually do have a little bit of input on this one. Uh, this is not easy advice. It's not really like an equation that just solves things, but... One thing, you will need less trust in your life if you have more confidence in your life. Uh, I am like 
to a fault. Wow. Uh, that was good. Profound. That was amazing. That's me. Bravo. Uh, thank you. I am to a fault <laughs> confident in everything I do. And like if people don't like it, I'm just like, yeah, screw you. Uh, which is like so sometimes it causes problems. But so I trust everyone because there's nothing they can know about me that can hurt me because I'm confident enough in everything I do. Now, that's not easy. And that doesn't mean I don't have insecurities. I absolutely do. But they're not about things people do or don't know about me. They're about things that are like blatantly obvious or whatever. Um, but yeah, if you're able to just be confident in the things you're going to express to people, then someone else repeating that can't hurt you. You know, once and so when you're ready to let something out of yourself, be ready to let it out to everyone. And if you can, if you can be comfortable with that, no one can hurt you with that information. Otherwise, you just got to well, be comfortable s trusting a very select, small group of people. But it sounds it. like That's what really she's really saying is, I don't trust that people really want to listen to me. Yeah. Well, That's what else would they want? Well, I they think want pe a lot of people kind of just maybe are just being nice. Just oh, yeah, if you need that, anything yeah. else, just, you know, let me know. It's almost like when you say, yeah. how are you? And people say, fine, but they don't really care how you are. Tara? I kind of, to bounce off of this, there can be people that they seem interested in you, but it's just for, like, that moment of time that they're interested in. When you actually do open up to them, they're just, it rolls off their shoulder. It's like, yeah, 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 whatever, and it didn't mean anything to them. And that happened to me recently, and it's, it hurts. And so I know that like for some people, when I expect that I can trust them, I want to feel like a genuine like so that's happiness like for me. Well, yeah, because okay. it's just like then they really didn't care. And that's what I think this person's scared of is they're going to open up and then the person's just not going to care. And it's like, but you said you would care. Like, why aren't you? Why aren't you there for me anymore? Like, uh, oh, yeah, I hear you. OK, <laughs> well, you can, even you can start me. sort of like with something that isn't really kind of like deep you can start yeah. by saying oh yeah like there was a plumbing problem at my mom's sink you know and just see if they listen to that if they listen to like a simple thing like my dog has a hangnail then they'll then you can yeah. oh i don't know Weezy, i'm though. sorry but if a lot of if, even if some of my closest friends were like oh my mom's sink broke i'd be like dude shut up i don't want to hear yeah. about it but if they were like i listen i have a problem i will drop anything and fly across the country at the drop of a hat to help my close friends out so True i think story. that i think that's yeah. not the best way to fill things out because i really don't care about your little problems but i will do anything to help you with your big problems so the big problems all right that's fair enough because sync problems are kind of sure. boring i wouldn't Shira. be that aggressive about it just sorry let me i wouldn't say shut um, up but. i was just gonna say too like if they've told you stuff about themselves before that kind of you know like they're gonna trust if they trust you talking like, to like, my information then um like you know what i mean yeah if someone yeah, has confided trust. something in you then they're they yeah, would be yeah, a good yeah. person that you could confide in and sometimes you just have to risk it like sometimes you to get the have biscuit to, okay yep yeah. <laughs> you, there's like a sense of vulnerability that you have to you have to do it sometimes and if it doesn't work out or you know you get hurt you know because you're confident. gonna keep yeah. losing friends until you're still an adult like it's just gonna happen yeah but it's worth finding those people exactly. that mm -hmm. it's worth it and you find people that you can like trust with you yeah, know the yeah, most more yeah. things or that will drop anything you know for you at you know the instant you know that ryan's talking about so you know people just like you would hopefully do that to your friends and, and you wouldn't be bothered by talking to them. You know, there are people who would do it for you and you can build that trust with them. And so you just kind of have to do it because there are, you will go through things and you're going to want people there for you. Exactly. And that's how you build. You know what? Sometimes people feel like it's an honor that you confide yeah, in them. It's such so a big honor. You, you want to give that gift of like letting them listen, letting them be there for you. Yeah. I'm going to jump to the second page here because I want to I want to make sure we get to this. We don't have any trans kids on the show but i know there's a lot of trans kids who watch the show and we got a letter and so i did some research you're gonna be so proud of me and the letter said i'm getting boobs so this is a trans boy i'm getting boobs and this backwards sports bra trick isn't working so how do i bind so this is what i learned all right don't do not bind with ace bandages or duct tape it's really unhealthy never sleep in your binder Buy, buy a chest binder online. So apparently they're, they're available online, but they're really expensive. Don't wear it for more than eight hours because you are like pressing your organs in. So you have to be careful about it. Um, you can layer sports bras, but get the kind of sports bras without cups and or you can make your own binder. So we found this guy and he made a video. It's kind of a long video. His name is Kovu is a unicorn. And we're going to play a portion of where he where he got to the part where he was making his own binder. Have you got that, Thomas? So for your Sorry, boobs, if you if you want to be if you are assigned female at birth, but you want to be a guy, he's a guy because he's decided to be a guy. Yeah. Originally was born as a female. So he's like, but now he's he a guy. So he's making kind of like a corsety thing, out of like cloth, and he poked four holes with string. 
Yeah, I'll blow again. Yeah, okay. Okay, you, you two well done. So, so and he has an awesome tighten accent, tighten so there's that. Well, tighten it. Um, but it looks sort of weird. But then I tied it, and guess what I did next? Guess what I did next? Oh my god, I turned it around. Wow, this is such a great experience. Revolution. So you can really make your own. And yeah, it works. Like, I really but any stretch, like, stretchier fabric is probably better for you. So I'm happy. Yeah. Also, when you're measuring around your chest, make sure to like remove a few centimeters because then you're going to tighten it. So yeah, just just do that. Like five to ten centimeters, like five. Yeah, that should be enough. Yeah. The way you can make your own chest binder is, uh, for example, if you have those compression shorts, uh, those like sports working out shorts or leggings or something like tight, then you could chop off your legs, um, cut like a hole in between and yeah put it on because you're normally the same size uh, around your waist and like your hips and thighs and stuff that's normally usually the same size as your chest size thing does that make sense mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he's gonna so be yeah, so hot when he gets older he is he's adorable all right so thank you so much if you have any questions about go. any of the topics we've been discussing you can give us a call at 888-531-7171 and you can talk to Ryan Shira Tara Katie Michael Jabbar Jilly in the booth tonight we have Drew Matt and Thomas did we skip any question that you guys thought was important on the first page we still have like 15 minutes. I know. I just want to make sure. That back. I know we're oh. not going to get to all of them. So does anyone have like a oh, favorite? Yeah, I tried to like get to all of them. My bad. I thought you were ending the show. I was like, whoa. Oh. We <laughs> no. All right, Kate. Or who wants to read? Ryan, would you want to read the question? I'm going into eighth grade. I would love to. <clears throat> I'm going into eighth grade at my school. Oh, sorry. Take two. I'm going into eighth grade and at my school, people join in into the middle and high school at seventh grade and you meet like 60 new people in your grade. I met this boy that I knew when I was little. It's summer and I really miss him. Now I realized I wouldn't miss him so much as I do if I didn't like him. I'm really good friends with this sister who's a couple grades up and she wants us to date, but he's so innocent and hasn't touched a girl, whereas I've kissed two people and have had a boyfriend. Um, <laughs> if and when we would break up, I would have a really hard time not being friends. Help on this? Um, break up. You're not even together yet. No, no. I th she's saying she's, if, if no, it progressed into a relationship, her fear is that... It, ending that relationship would ruin her friendship which is a valid fear but screw that like if you live your life sheltered that's mad boring okay um, so do you guys want to address that moment where you thought it mattered like who had kissed who at uh, by a certain point in time and that somebody was more advanced than somebody else i think for guys that's probably a, that's definitely a little bit intimidating if the girl uh, i mean i disagree kiss two people oh are you a guy <laughs> <laughs> no but like okay. i've had people is tell me that they actually love it when a girl is more experienced okay but they're too. in when eighth they, grade when they're young let me Wait, is it the guy or the girl who's more i think girl. she's kissed more guys and he hasn't kissed anybody yet Yeah, the girl is, or as uh, far as she knows but like he not with he'll, he'll like that at his age he'll you don't like know that. that no you don't know that you really don't i person personally i wouldn't like that well, i think whatever, i think the majority you, of Ryan, i think the majority of eighth grade boys or whatever would be a little intimidating if this girl liked them yeah. and if he's like innocent what if he's like a super super shy kind of a kid too you know he might not be like the star in football that yeah i've never kissed a girl but i still got confidence out the <laughs> booty you know what i mean yeah but don't you think you can like the guy is supposed to like i feel like there's the thing of like the guy is supposed to like initiate it and like that whole pressure right. See, i don't mind if a girl initiates it i just no but i'm mind saying if they like a, have a lot more experience there's a the pressure on it for the guy, and that might be a little, but that's I don't I think. And that's if the like, sister is like, wants that's what to I'm date, concerned I'm about. I'm sure they're at their house, the sister and the brother, and she's like teasing him about wanting to date. That's why I'm concerned. You know what about. I mean? But don't do it for any reason. That I, this basically, it's really easy to convince yourself you're interested in someone because they're interested in you, or because someone else thinks you should be. That's interested what I'm in them. concerned about. And it's like totally fine for someone to be like, that's oh, like all, I ship yeah. that. That's a cute couple. Whatever, right? That. Like that's <laughs> one of my least, favorite that's expressions. What they say, right? like, <laughs> I ship that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I've never heard of that. You've never life. heard that? I love that expression. It's, it's, it's like when you really like two people together or like some, like relationship. Like I ship that. You approve like that I, relationship. I, you, you, you think you've it never heard that? I don't need your approval. 
Okay, okay. it's so but, fun. Okay. I highly suggest you all use it. It's okay. so fun. But given the fact that like some people do them. need approval, <laughs> um, don't let someone's approval, like a sister or <laughs> their pressure, like God, no. push you into a situation. Because yeah. it, I mean, it's a, there's nothing wrong with with going out a few well, times with someone who you're not. not really that interested in. It's not like a catastrophic issue, but no. just don't fake yourself out for being for having feelings you don't. Or just have. creating Pretty something teams. that maybe you didn't even feel in the first place. That's what I'm concerned about. Like maybe you're creating something in your head well especially over the summer don't you think yes. that? yes oh my god the summer is yeah. such a crazy time especially when you're younger because you're only at least for me like i was only hanging out with like my friends and so you're very you know, in you're your you're in your head and you're creating in like the this summer of six to nine. yeah um <laughs> situations and so i'm like my concern for you is that if you are friends with them or you're friends with the sister and this has the potential to get a little bit awkward very quickly for you just make sure that, you know, that's what you want because it could happen very naturally and that's the way it should happen if it's going to happen. Right, that's because, my feeling. yeah, you've been taking sort of all these leaps in your head right. and moving forward to where you're breaking up already and just get to know the kid. You like the kid, he likes you, be be friends. You don't have to play this whole thing out. It will happen naturally and if you're supposed to kiss him, you'll kiss him. Also, like, kind of just back to what I said at first without trying to be as aggressive as I said it at first, <laughs> um, like, you just re-met the guy. So effectively, you just met him. Like, you haven't seen him since you were little before now. I'm sorry, but if you lose him as a friend, like, it's not the end of the world. And I think you should, if you actually think you like him, you should totally go and have fun and not worry about the fear that you break up with him and lose him as a friend because you lose friends all the time for more more reasons than one. And this yeah. is a really bad reason to let to he hold yourself back. He could be kissing two girls right now and totally catching up with you. So well, it could be summer. That Summer escalated. is the time when that stuff happens. You know what I'm True saying? True story. She is True taking story. it to the dark side uh, No. Um, so I'm going <laughs> to skip ahead and go to no. uh, who hasn't read and wants to read? Anybody? Shira. Shira. Somehow I have to sing her name. I don't know what that is, but. It works. <laughs> the, I'm a very. Open. Yes, exactly. Um, I'm very overprotected by my parents and I'm getting super depressed. My parents say I can only have friends with the same religion as me. <gasps> I do online school because of the bad influences in public schools. My dad won't let me go alone with a group of friends anywhere. I'm 16. I can't have social media or date or go to parties. I can't even take a walk in the neighborhood or stay home by myself. It's not as simple as leaving the house when I'm 18. My family would literally stop talking to me. I don't know what to do. I am not trying to bash my religion. Other kids in the religion still do normal things like hang out with friends, just not with my parents. So Whoa. in this may be overstepping a boundary, but in my opinion, <laughs> this is an abusive home. Uh, I would consider anything that's so controlling abusive. That's my perspective of it. Same. And there are a lot of people who have to cut ties with their families to get what, what's healthiest for them in life. Now, you're 16. I'm not advising you to do that now. And it sucks. And you're getting depressed, and I respect that. I've been there. It's horrible. Uh, unfortunately, you don't have a lot of options. Once you're 18, I it, it's not as simple. You said it's not as simple as just moving out. But one day, there will be a time when you do move out. And when you're prepared to be on your own, you're going to have to start doing things for your own. And if your family decides that they're going to stop talking to you because of that, those might be some of the decisions you have to make in your life. It's a tough hand to have been dealt, but you don't really have a choice as long as you're under their roof. I would say sneak around as much as you can. That's your really only option. And um, so I would say, you know, if there's a parent of a friend who's in the religion that you can trust, who seems like they would understand that you, but make sure you really do trust them, that you can, you know, talk to about very respectfully about how you're feeling, you know, maybe that's an option or a counselor and, you know, that it's not about your religion, but that you do, you know, want to to have some sort of freedom or, or have a game plan for when you do turn 18 it sounds like you just want some independence and you want some some way to talk to your parents yeah and, and and it seems like you're lacking in in that department um but i think that you know you i i do hear what you're saying ryan i think you you know know the situation best um just, I think, talking to people, being respectful of the rules while you're in the house and then figuring out the game plan that's best for you. Um, you know, maybe talking to, I think, a parent or if there is a family member that, you know, you do trust and maybe you can stay with them and your family trusts them or something of that sort. You know, I don't know. So I have this whole philosophy about how the errors of all or nothing thinking 
And it's kind of like you're either overweight or you're anorexic. And so neither one of those is, is the solution. Like you have to learn how to control yourself. And so when you're a parent, you have to teach your child how to manage difficult decisions or how to have the right amount of freedom or the right amount of uh, social interaction or who's dangerous and who's safe. And, that, and, and if they're just keeping you under their roof and then they're not doing their job as parents, like to mm -hmm. teach you how to be a, an adult who has a sense of things. Like you should be able to come home and go, mom, dad, like this, I met this guy and he seemed kind of weird. And then they can say, yeah, good instincts. I'm glad that you knew to walk away from that situation. Th that should happen while you're under 18 so that when you're over 18, you can use your own judgment. But if they're not letting you have little experiences or loosening, you know, the reins a little bit so that you can fall and then pick yourself back up, while you're still living under the safety of their roof, they're not doing their job. And so I, I don't know that there's anything we can say to change them, but I do advise what Jillie is advising, which is like, see if there's a youth pastor or the minister or somebody in your church, like since there's kids in your church that, that did have a little bit more freedom, go to somebody and say like, can you help my parents understand that the best thing they can do for me is to give me a little bit of freedom? Because otherwise when I'm 18, I'm bolting. They won't know their grandkids. I'm gone. Yeah. And that's what ha that's what happens when you try to hold people too tightly. I, I do think, though, like, don't get your hopes up for that. Like, oh, don't yeah. try and do expectations because, honestly, trying to change a parent just doesn't friggin' happen. Especially it, 16 it, years into the process. Yeah, like, yeah. they're not, they're not going to change their mind, so just well, chill I, out. I don't think, like, changing I, your parents, though, but I think, like, I think that you can find a way to have, like, a... A communication with them or, no. or adjust a, a relationship I, I mean think I'm just very pessimistic in that area because, well no I've just seen I've, I've been around so many parents that I've seen where they're just they, they stay the same no matter what and their kids I, I grew up on an island where there was not a lot of stuff to do and it's the same thing over and over and over right. again so it's just like I mean I, they're probably not you're 16 they're very religious religious people well, I'm not saying don't that change. they're gonna change but I think that like Only situations like, and like yeah circumstances like those can change maybe you, you know can invite mean? people over yeah. you can do you can think of creative solutions especially if you find yeah. allies outside of your immediate home in or like in understandings can change like i think that you know people i agree with you but i i also think that you know like things shift yeah. and people's understandings can change and like I just think, gotta try you know and be I mean? creative about it and if it doesn't work it doesn't work one yeah. of the things that, that will shift it the most is that you grow up, you marry somebody who's not in this religion, and you have a baby. And then your parents suddenly are like, oh, well, we, you know, then you will be the one holding all the cards. Like, I have this baby. Do you want to see this baby or not? Because, like, we're over here with this baby. And Effectively, we see saying babies are a form, a form of currency in which you can barter are. with family members you absolutely, over their love. You know, you can weaponize your baby. Exactly. <laughs> And uh, no, I'm, I'm being I'm, I'm actually really being serious because don't have the baby until you're over 25 and you're ready to raise a baby. But <laughs> what I'm saying is like the thing that opens up hearts the most is when somebody goes off and does their own life. And it's like now it's on your terms and your parents can either come along or, or lose you completely. And I hope it doesn't come to that. I hope they but I, I do agree with what you're saying, Tara, is that there's not there. People can change, but they won't change a lot. Yeah, but you can Generally also speaking. look up... An understanding, maybe. I have a... Might not yeah. agree, Glennon, but maybe they'll understand. Glennon Doyle did a whole thing about um, what Trump did um, with the whole banning uh, trans people from the military, and she is very involved in, like, the church, and she came out, and she's married to Abby Wamba. I always butcher her last name. Is who? Player? Yes. Um, and she kind of was very involved... She still is very involved in her religion and she has written and does a lot of videos about like how she balances her religion with her sexuality. And, you know, if you want to look her up, because she kind of talks a lot about balancing religion and um, how much you take, you know, the Bible and the church and what different influences. So she's I. Where I mean, do we I'm find Jewish, but I just find it all very interesting. Where do we but find her? She, I follow her on Instagram, but okay. she has a book. She has several books, actually. She was on the Oprah cruise. Um, oh, she was. Okay. What's her she name? She was uh, Glennon Doyle. How do you spell that? G-L-E-N-N-O-N-D-O-Y-L-E. -N -N -E. Yeah. Okay. I don't know who she is, but that's Probably how you spell that. Glennon Doyle. Um, but I follow her on Instagram, and that she has a lot really of great That was really impressive. Stuff. Yeah. Ryan is very you impressive. You can also DM me, and I can wow. uh, oh, yeah. do it. Well, let's go give a real quick out for a, so, uh, a quick shout out for social media where you want people to find you, Ryan. <laughs> From like where they can find me? Yeah. Oh, you can't find me anywhere. No. Um, uh, uh, Instagram, I think, is R J Tab. <laughs> That's it. T R J T A B B. That's me. Shira. Uh, Instagram 
is my name, S-H-I-R-A underscore E and then four A's. Tara? Tara Bianco. All over the internet. Yep. Katie Michael. Katie Michael Bullen. But the Michael you? has no E in it. <laughs> it's, that's no K. Key. That's critical. K-A-T-I-E-M-I-C-H-A-L-P-U-L-L-E-N. Jabbar Lewis. Oh. Google me. Jabbar <laughs> Lewis. You'll just see everything. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> I saw that, too. Um, I'm Jilly Halperin everywhere. <laughs> but J- you are that's Jilly the way Halperin. to do it. I-L-L-Y-H-A-L-P-E-R-I-N. And I'm Louise Palanker all over the internet. Now, let's do another question. Oh, let's do it. Who's Who wants to read? I'll do it. Oh, 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 the last one. You want to do the last one? Yeah. No, can we not, please? Uh-oh. I feel like this is a really hard no. one. Yeah, that's a hard one. I you guys can't. want to avoid the tough things? No, that's I what can't. the question's have, about. Uh, that's what the question's minutes. about, and that's minutes. why we need to read it. I can't. No, we started late. The question's about oh, exactly that. Do you have an answer for it, Ryan? Uh, I think it's a discussion. It doesn't All have right, an answer. Katie, okay. All right. Any, whoa. Anyone else extremely terrified of death? <laughs> This fear is preventing me from living. I believe in God, but I've started doubting my faith because it all started feeling unrealistic. Now I'm twice as scared of dying because I don't know what will happen. I think about it all the time. And I just want to stop being like this. Okay. I. Um, oh, look who wants to talk about it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually read the question and there was a part in there that talked to me. Okay. So I used to go to church my whole life. I grew up as a Christian. I went to church my entire life. But then all this stuff started happening to my dad and my family and I and it, and then I started seeing like how the world works and I was just like how? I don't understand it and I I I'm not going to say I don't believe but I definitely am on like the wavering all the time. I don't go to church anymore and I don't pray. I don't do any of that kind of stuff. I don't not think that there's a God, but I'm also very much of like, I can't be faith anymore. Like I got to see something. I, I am unfortunately like the world has turned me into that kind of a person. What about life after death? There's, um, I don't know. I think, I don't know. I don't, I don't like to think about that because if there is life after death, here's my thing. I, then I start thinking about ghosts and then I start thinking about like <laughs> demons and then I start thinking uh. about like, what if they're after me? But I do think that, uh, actually, no, I do think that there's that like a happy <laughs> little place because I know that like my dogs are all playing together right mm-hmm. now and then my grandma's probably laughing Does anybody me. watch Tyler Henry? Hollywood media? Yes. Okay. Obviously. So I highly recommend if you're feeling scared about, about death, I highly it's recommend wild. Tyler Henry. The kid is amazing. Ryan, what do you have? You don't have to be base jumping uh, to live your life, but you can do fun things still. Uh, and, and if your fear, obviously your fear of death stems from two places, the actual act or lack thereof of being dead. Um, and then what happens to you when you're dead? You can't be in hell. Right. What, your <laughs> religious, your religious upbringing that tells you that there is a heaven and there's a hell and you begin to doubt that. Uh, personally, as a Jewish person, we're led to believe there's only a heaven, uh, but I'm really not religious anyway. Uh, I totally believe there could be a God. Like, I'm just sharing, you know, I, I think there could be a God. Um, I don't really care. That's my thing. It's like, I'm going to be a good person. And you know what? Like, if God shows up and is like, hey, you were a good person. Now, welcome to heaven. I'd be like, all right. Here's t- I'll be like, tight key. dog, pound well, it. I think and that's then, the key. And then if, if you're afraid, if, just if God be is, good. Yeah. And if well. God is like, if God never shows up, and I was still a good person, then cool. I was a good person. Like, I don't, yeah. there's no but downside I, to that. You know, I, so if you have, cons- you know, well, what were you going to say, Jillian? I, I was I'm just interested in what you're going to say. Oh, that's for, nice. Uh, for the first time. <laughs> Sweet. Um, you know, I think that the way I like choose to live my life is not in fear. And I think that you like have to figure out the way you want to live your life. Because if you like, for me, it doesn't really matter to me. Like, I don't want to live my life in fear. I try not to live my life uh, stressed or anxious. I mean, obviously, like, you have to at times. But I think in the bigger scheme of things, like, I'd rather be happy. And I think happiness is, like, a choice. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I think that we go through things and, you know, there's ups and downs. But I think, you know, if you fear the end or you fear death, you're not living in the present moment. And like, that's such a shame. Yeah. Y- your afterlife though. is for your life after you die to deal with. Here's my thing. If you're afraid of hell, 
There's your answer. Ryan had it. Just be a good person. If you're afraid of the actual act of dying, it might hurt because you might get hit by a bus or you might have a slow, painful death in a sinkhole or you might get shot in the head. It won't hurt at all. Or you get like bombed by a nuclear thing and like die from asphyxiation or whatever. If this that's what you're afraid of, you, you honestly, you cannot be afraid of that because if you get in a car every day and you drive around, you might get hit. All right. If you get in a plane, it might fall out of the sky. You might. I don't. You but know you're what I mean? not living but your life. Yeah. Then. You still got to live your life. So if that's what you're afraid of, you got to get over that. But if you're afraid of hell, just be a good person well, life, and God will be there for there's you. There's no life hell. not lived is. is I a, don't believe in hell. A, then you might a, as well just die yeah, now if you're not going to live it. A life. Yeah. A life not that lived was, is, is a life very yeah, much like very so wasted. Think about all the time that you right have now. wasted being stressed or anxious about what you've been feeling like that. Cause I, when, especially when I was younger, I used to be stressed out about death all the time. Like I, I had a moment where I would be, I was so worried about dying. I don't know why. Um, and I, I just very clearly see little Jilly. Like, no, I was really stressed <laughs> about it. No, I, I think panicked. it's really normal. I think it's I was really, really panicked and you know, I don't know. I don't remember what exactly turned it, but I think it was this kind of philosophy of like, you have to kind of live in the present and you have to not worry so much about the future because it, in that you're not living a uh, like a life worth living like it's just not worth it it's not it's not it's uh, not so it's, really, it's a really, really hard thing to do because we do we do think too much but if you if you look at luna you know she's not thinking about yesterday or tomorrow or life or death she's just in the moment so kind of like live be, your life be, like luna. be the puppy can i get really existential for yes. a second okay so my <laughs> personal th- i don't think i think everyone on earth is really selfish yeah. Um, and how does that, so the way that impacts like the afterlife, my thing is like, I think mother Teresa may have been one of the s- most selfish people of all time, but she was blessed with the things that, with the things that made her feel good being positive things, if that makes sense. So some people get good feelings out of being good to others and that's a blessing for them. Uh, but I don't think that those people, no one does anything they don't want to do. People might, you might get out of bed early to do community service and say, well, I didn't want to do that. But in the long run, you are feeling better about what you did than you are worse about having to get up in the morning or you wouldn't do it. That's just like human instinct. So wow. if, if, if you believe that there's a God that, that put you together, all your faults and all your, um, your gifts are all a result of that. And so you can't put yourself to blame for wanting to do things that, that God made you want to do. And to me, everyone's selfish. It's not like being selfish is a sin because some people are selfishly good. Does that make sense? Like people yeah, who do good things human. are self-serving in the fact that doing good things make them feel good. And luckily for them and everyone around them, it's good things that make them we feel all, good instead of bad things. We're all human. We have an id, an ego, and a superego. You just have to balance it all out. And if you're worried about that whole forever thing that you know most kids worry about, you know, just read some of the books about past lives and, and, you know, you know, come to an understanding that, you know, possibly we're all here forever. And so, and just figure out how to make the, the most out of this life you've been given, which is a precious gift and, and not worry about forever. Because I don't think here in our human form, we're meant to understand it. That's why there's so many different religions. If we understood that maybe space and time aren't even things in the afterlife, like there's just, there's, there's just, maybe there's just now. And so we just don't understand it because we're in this human form. My so. head legitimately hurts right now. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> so I know. It's a lot to think about. <laughs> it, it, it is. But I just fun. want you to relax and enjoy coffee. enjoy the blessing of your life and be a blessing to everyone who knows you. And Right? You guys bar- are all blessings. Beautiful. You guys are beautiful You guys are my blessings. And Luna, Hold my hand. You don't know me that well. And Luna just slept through the you. whole show. So I know that. you, Ryan. We bored her. But I, know yeah. so. I was entertained. And I want to thank everyone for being with us. And we will see you next time on Journals <laughs> yeah. Out. Subscribe to our wonderful program. Yeah.